Welcome, I'm Tom Lord Algy. We're here with Mix with the Masters at La Fabrique in the south of France, and I am in the middle of my inaugural Mix with the Masters seminar. Um, I'm in my fourth day, and so far I'm having a great time learning a lot from my students, as I hope that they're learning a lot from me. So we have some questions here from some of you out there from Sound on Sound magazine, and uh, I'm gonna answer a handful of questions. And the first question we have is from a gentleman named Tom Serbin. And Tom writes, hi Tom, I think you mentioned that you're using your SSL more as a summing mixer and you work a lot more in the box nowadays. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, you're not wrong. What are your motives for working in the box? Is it the recall? And what does your SSL bring to your workflow? Thank you for your time and I love your work. Well, thanks, Tom. Thank you for the compliments. And you're absolutely correct. I've made it a point over the past decade or so to become proficient in working more in the box, um, specifically with uh, Pro Tools, just in the case, just in case the day came where I didn't have a console. So I wanted to make sure that I was able to operate it and still be able to mix. Now that I have my own SSL um, at Spank Studios in Miami Beach, Florida, which is my, my own studio, I use my console more as kind of like a mastering console. So the majority of my mixing is done within the box using plugins, except for the fact that I'm bringing it out as if it's an old school multi-track. So it's not necessarily coming out as stems, but it's literally coming out, if you've thought of it, let's say if you've thought of it, how are we gonna print this onto a 48 channel digital tape machine? So I have the bass drum comes up on one channel and the snare drum comes up on another channel and the tom-toms would come up on, on a pair of channels and the overhead cymbals and so on. So generally speaking, I'm bringing my mix up into 44 channels of my console. So what that allows me to do, it allows me to use the best bits from Pro Tools, which I believe is the, the ability to manipulate the audio and, and to use the plugins in a creative manner, but also use my SSL as this great summing amplifier. There's a, there's a, there's a reason why these analog consoles are so big is because they kind of absorb the sound and they add this wonderful tone, a wonderful tonal quality to the digital audio. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. So that's how I do it. And again, I'm using the SSL more as kind of like a mastering thing. So I still do use equalization and, and outboard compression, but not as much as I used to use. But I like the sound of when I bring in all the audio into my SSL, again, as if it was a multi-track. Um, and, and, and again, it just, it just adds this analog sound that I find quite appealing. So Tom, thank you for the question. I hope that that answers it. So we have a question here from Jane Drake. Jane writes, hi Tom. What's the best way to become a professional mix engineer? I get good feedback from others on my mixes and have many years experience, but not sure how or where to start finding decent opportunities. Well, Jane, you're not alone. It's, it's a difficult business. Um, my advice to you is to start by <laughs> start by <laughs> utilizing any of your friends that are musicians and offering free mixes. Start there and hope, hoping that those mixes be, get heard and get out on the internet and, and actually get released. The other thing to do is to go to a lot of shows, go to concerts, hang around places where musicians congregate you know, strike up conversations, you know, hang around like minds and then be able to offer your services. That's another way. A third way also is, is, to, is to take the studio approach and, and go into a studio. And unfortunately, you'd probably have to start at the, lower, the lowest end of it, which would be cleaning bathrooms and making tea and running errands. But it will give you an opportunity to put you in an environment, a creative environment, where they're looking for talent like that. Um, the other thing you could try, to be quite honest, is just put an ad up on the internet. 
you know, or on your Facebook page and, and offer, you know, um, offer, you know, we'll mix your, you know, we'll mix your song for blah, 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 you know, offer a special rate. You know, when I was starting, I pretty much would, would mix for free if it was for an artist that I felt would help my career grow. So it's a difficult, you're in a difficult position, but if you're getting good feedback from your mixes, that's a huge plus. So again, maybe you want to try and strike up relationships with producers to become their go-to mixer. Um, that certainly is, 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 a, is a way that's worked for me. I know that it's also a way that's worked for my brother Chris. So there's a couple pieces of advice. Whatever you do, do not become discouraged and keep mixing. So that was a good question, Jane, and I wish you the best of luck. So now we're going to move to the next question, and, and the next question comes from Nick Casey. And Nick writes, Do you ever use a piece of gear as a mojo processor instead of its intended purposes? Like, just hit a vintage EQ or compressor, leave all the controls flat, and add color to dry signal with the I.O. electronics or transformers. Generally, what type of gear sounds good in this application? Any favorite or cheap tricks? Pertaining to cheap tricks, I recommend Surrender. Mommy's all right. Daddy's all right. They just seem a little weird. Surrender? Surrender. But don't give yourself away. So that would be my cheap trick joke. But to answer your question honestly, no. I generally, if I'm going to run audio through a piece of gear, then generally speaking, I'm going to have that piece of gear doing something. Um, you know, the analog pieces of gear that I'm using nowadays generally are my stereo bus compressors, you know, which, which would be my Focusrite Red 3 or my TubeTech LC2B, uh, LCA2B, um, or of course the, the uh, quad compressor uh, that's built into my, 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 uh, my console. But no, I... I, I in the past, of course, I've run audio through pieces of equipment and done things with it that the piece of equipment wasn't intended to do. Generally, it was to, to experiment and to come up with some wacky sound. Um, but nowadays, I will do that with plugins. Um, but in answer to your question, no. I just like to use my vintage compressors, again, to, to kind of just pull my mix together and, and kind of create the glue. Um, so again, I hope that, 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 uh, I hope that that's answered your question, Nick, but again, keep screwing around with some of this vintage gear and just remember, try what it's not supposed to do. You will be very surprised at the results. It's called being creative and that's what we are as mixers. We need to be creative. So thanks for the question, Nick. Next question. This comes from Astro Mechanics and his question is, what mixing change do you use for vocals? Thanks, Tom. I'm a big fan of the BF76. Um, I know it's one of the older Bomb Factory plugins. Um, there's something about it that I really like, especially when you just totally abuse it and, and add tons of compression. Um, it's usually the first thing that I'll try and if it's not doing what I like, I'll, I'll try a, a 33609. Um, IK Multimedia does a great version of the 33609 as well as Universal Audio. So the, either one of those, I think, I mean, obviously the Universal Audio is, is very good, but, but either one of those I think sounds really good. And then of course there's, the, there's the, the, the SSL channel strip, you know, which I think works really well on it as well. So it's really dependent more on the singer and and the type you know the amount and the type of compression that you're looking to achieve in that particular uh, situation so you know i can only tell you what i start with you know and that's what i start with so that's kind of my mixing chain and then again i would i would usually i like to equalize into compression um especially when it comes to vocals so again as far as plugins go you know depending on what I'm doing, it would either be the SSL, the Waves SSL channel strip or the, the Universal Audio SSL channel strip. Or sometimes I will use the Focusrite um, 
you know, red plug-in, which is an equalizer, you know, and then again, that into, uh, into uh, either the BF76 or 33609, again, depending on, on the application. So good question, Astro. Thank you very much. Next question comes from Dave Clark. Dave asks, who owns more black t-shirts, you or Chris? Thanks for the question, Dave. That was a good one. I, I got a chuckle when I looked at it earlier because, of course, today I'm wearing a white shirt. So, <laughs> very good. Sense of humor is very important. So, thanks, Dave. Cheers. Patrick Napoleon is next. He writes, do you prefer hardware or software verb and why? But I'm using more software verbs right now. The reason is I really love the fact that when I open up my session or if I'm recalling a mix, that all that comes back and I don't have to deal with the, the, the hardware. I prefer to use this, the, the software because again, I think they've gotten really good at making them sound great. And of course, you know, it's all that is stored within your session, which works really good, which works really well. Having said that, I still have not found a substitute for my old faithful Sony DRE 2000. So when it comes to drum reverb, I'm still using the Sony DRE 2000, um, which has been my favorite and, and my brother Chris's favorite for years and years and years. And what I do with the Sony DRE 2000 these days is I set it up the way that I want it and actually print that audio into the session. You know, I will notate the settings if I have to go back and redo it, but generally I like to record it into the session so that the next time I open the session, it's already there. And plus sometimes I, I'll change the, the, the decay time. I might make the verse a longer decay time and the chorus a shorter decay time. And again, that's achieved very easily when you're printing it. So, um, but mainly I'm using uh, software reverbs. So, and again, there are a lot of great ones out there. Fab Filter Reverb, which just came out, is really nice. You know, I'm a big fan of the Ocean Way, the Universal Audio Ocean Way Room, which is great for guitars or for just room simulations. You know, um, and honestly, all you're going to laugh, but the D verb, um, the Avid D verb, I use quite a bit. There's a couple of settings in there which are really nice. It's not my main reverb, but it has a couple of qualities about it that I really like and some very specific things that I use it for. But thanks for the question, Patrick. I hope that helps. Next question we have, John writes, how do you get some fatness, attack, and punch with kick and snare drum sounds? It's called compression and equalization. And I don't have a template or a setting that I use every time. I only have a starting point. And sometimes my starting point doesn't work and my starting point is usually the Waves SSL plugin and sometimes that doesn't work. And I'll go through all different types, chains of events until I get what I'm looking for. But generally, it's just using my hearing and my imagination and to try and get the drums to sound like what I'm hearing in my head to try and get that to come out of the speakers. So again, it, sometimes it's a simple is just using the SSL channel strip, and sometimes it gets more complicated via putting in a chain of events, uh, like a, 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 a 1073 into a 33609, you know, and then maybe adding some saturation to it. So it's all dependent on the audio source. Um, but again, it's kind of like, it starts in here, and then what takes the amount of time is getting it from here to come out of those. So, I hope that helps you out there, John. Um, and again, I, I appreciate all the questions. You guys are awesome. And I want to thank all the people here at Mix With The Masters and Studio La Fabrique for being such wonderful hosts and giving me the opportunity to answer your questions. And I'm Tom Lord Algy, coming to you from Studio La Fabrique with Mix With The Masters. And remember, if you're gonna crank it, you better spank it. So thanks again. Cheers, everybody. Happy mixing.